Imagine you've boarded your plane, buckled your seatbelt, and you've been on at least 20 different flights before. So you know the script that the flight attendant gives. You've memorized it. However, mid-flight, suddenly, you encounter unexpected turbulence because you have entered an unexpected storm. It is dark. And the plane is going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down with each cloud that it encounters. The flight attendants, they take their seat and they announce, we are experiencing unexpected turbulence because we have encountered an unexpected storm. In that moment, some people are terrified. I mean, there is a chance that this plane could go down in a horrible crash. Such as the same in the world of trauma. But you ever wonder why the pilots and the cabin crew remain calm? I mean, they're in the same turbulence and the same storm we're in. However, they trained for it. They understand that it is their position seated that keeps them safe during the middle of the turbulence amidst the storm. In other words, training and positioning are key for navigating the unexpected turbulence that come with the unexpected storms in the skies. And just as pilots and cabin crew can train for the unexpected storms that happen in the skies, so too can we train for the unexpected turbulence that come with the unexpected storms of life. Trauma. Trauma. That's everybody's problem. Because according to the Global Collaboration on Traumatic Stress, 70% of the world's population has experienced trauma. And even if you're a part of the 30% who never has, chances are you know or you love someone who has. The American Psychological Association president decreed amidst the pandemic that we were also in a racial pandemic. That is racial trauma. The American Psychological Association defines trauma as the emotional response to severe events that lead to shock, denial, and long-term effects. And trust me, I get it. I understand APA's definition. I mean, I am a licensed clinical professional counselor. However, I also define trauma as the absence of light because it is dark. It is very, very dark. And I personally understand this darkness all too well. And there's some of you in this room that understand that trauma all too well. See, my ACEs scores are 12 out of 10. I'll explain my math in a second. Now, ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. These are not the type of ACEs you get playing spades. And trust me, I know because I got trophies playing that game. I got bragging rights. No, I didn't want these type of ACEs because these were those dangerous and traumatic events that happened during childhood my childhood, that had devastating and long-term impacts on both health and overall wellness. Now, let me explain my math. My ACEs scores are 12 out of 10 because the ACEs survey does not describe the types of things that the APA president decreed when she said that we were in a racism pandemic. And I experienced racism before I could write in cursive or before I knew what an adverb or pronoun was. And it's dark. It is very, very dark. Racism is dark. It is hurtful. It is shameful. It is condemning, and it happens all too often. Now, Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, she said, and she's one of the leading experts in ACEs, she said that the science is clear there are long-lasting, devastating impact on both health and overall wellness for those with ACEs. 
And I understand what she means to a T because of the traumas that I experienced, I also experienced an early on anxiety disorder, juvenile diabetes, and over 100 diabetic seizures before I was the age of 25. It was dark. It was very, very dark. The rape, it was dark. The sexual abuse, it was dark. The molestation, it was dark. The physical abuse, it was dark. The bullying, it was dark. The rejection, it was dark. The parental divorce, it was dark. The abandonment was dark. Watching my father as a child through a jail cell window was dark. Watching my father struggle with a substance use disorder was dark. Watching my best friend shot was dark. It was dark. The suicide attempt, that was dark. But then there was light. And I'm going to describe how my darkness turned to light using evidence-based practices that align with BIPOC ancestral resources. Now, I define BIPOC ancestral resources as the things that my ancestors did to survive events like slavery. And then they taught their children, and their children taught their children, and their children taught their children, and their children taught their children, and they taught us. It is not only how we survive, but how we thrive. Historically, peer support models of communal engagement were fundamental in African communities. It fostered resiliency and promoted emotional well-being. It was a common practice in African communities. The term Ujima stands for collective work and responsibility. And it was demonstrated through rituals, ceremonial gatherings, and just taking on a village approach where I became my brother and my sister's keeper. Now, this same BIPOC ancestral resource is now recognized as one of the leading evidence-based practices that reduces mental health stigmas, reduces relapse rates, promotes positive mental health co outcomes, and it reduces hospital and healthcare costs. It works. The second is the concept of the purpose-driven equation, where just as one plus one plus one equals three, pain plus practice plus passion, it equals purpose. It's a model that I crafted that aligns with a common evidence-based practice using counseling called narrative therapy. We don't teach people in narrative therapy to go back and erase your past because you can't really do that. But I can, and as counselors, we can teach people to create a new chapter where they are and create a new chapter in their futures. Now, the term Sankofa in Africa stands for go back and get it. In other words, Go back into the trauma, go back into the darkness, go back into the rejection, go back into the isolation, go back where you were hurt. And I know it's scary, but go back anyway. And when you go back, you're going back with a vengeance and you're going back on purpose to bring out resources that will not only help you where you are today, but help your communities. Now, I applied this concept to my life and I took the pain of watching my father die with a substance use disorder. And as his power of attorney, oftentimes I was the first to show up at an emergency room situation and having to navigate biased systems. It was painful. And then I added it with the practice of me being an educator and being an entrepreneur. Now, I had lemonade stands since I was seven, I asked my mother. And they were great. And I took the passion of me wanting to help people who may have been feeling like I did. And when I added it all up together, what it totaled was that I created a nationally recognized, culturally responsive peer recovery training model that has trained thousands across the US. Now, your application may look different, but the model is still the same. You take your pain, you add it with your practices, and you add it with your passions, and you see what it equals, because it does equal something. It equals a book, 
It equals a product. It equals a ministry. It equals an answer somebody is waiting for. It equals a technology. It equals a patent. It equals a restaurant. It equals something. It equals your purpose. Whenever you are facing trauma, I want you to remember these four P's are your keys. Take out paper and a pen, and you write. You write out your pains. And I know it's going to be difficult for you to write it out, but you got to visit it anyway. You write out your pain. You write out your practices. And you write out your passions. And you see what it totals, because it totals the fourth P, your purpose. Now, while these four Ps are your keys, you don't have to do it alone because the model that works is that peer support is the key ring that holds it all together because together we fly higher, not because of our traumas, but because we are supporting each other, being our brother and our sister's keeper, and because of our collective wisdom to rise above it. Thank you.